Hello, hey everyone, and welcome in. This is the Melanie Gamers podcast. I'm here with the full squad today. Um, in the dock. Hi guys. Obsidian Fury. What's going on, squad? OG Otaku. Yay, yay. And then. Why, hello. And we're doing a roundup of all of the games. No, games. no, no. Round down. A round doing down. A round down. We're going to flip it, man. Round okay. down, not round up. Uh, what, what's right. the difference? What we're doing I mean, is a round down, round up. I don't, what, what, whatever we're <laughs> yes. doing. And it's your hostess with the most. I didn't even introduce myself because I was rudely cut oh. off as usual. Oh. Oh, sorry. Anyway, it's Excuse your hostess with the most creatively as yet. Since Zen is so vocal today, they can go first. Please, you have the floor. Here we go. Here we go. Good news, exquisite news for once, for me. What, well, well, hopefully, it's hopeful, with, you know. OG Battlefield coming back in the cup. They have mm. gotten rid of the mm-hmm. operators, potentially. We love OG Potent- Battlefield, yeah. I mean, come on. Like, the carnage. LMGs, when you got the LMGs Donnies lying on the floor, nothing but smoke getting kicked up in the air. Take your chances, run down the corridor, see if you can do a wicked play that, you know, you can capture the point. 64 player maps instead of the 100 and whatever they were trying to do before. So... It is what we are talking about, fully focused on destruction. Everybody remembers the destruction on the OG maps. The way the whole terrain changes and like, I can't wait for that. Like, proper Battlefield uh, fan from, you know, Bad Company, one of the best ones, down to Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, obviously it had its you know obviously it was was up there but battlefield bad company one and two uh bad company two battlefield three um but yeah they're looking to to be coming back i know that the developer um, the developer that was in charge of you know apex and he's been in charge of other games as well is is coming is is on the team for that so yeah i'm excited man i'm, I'm excited so that that's my little bit. Do you think they said let's go back to basics? Uh, let's go back to the core foundation because it's been going so left for so long for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That apparently that's what they're saying. They're saying that they're they're listening to the fans. Well, do you know what? They they were forced to listen to the fans because the fans came on, said, Yeah, nah, mm-mm. And the new people kind of came on and said, well, what's the hype? Because we're not seeing the game. And the fans were backing it and saying, listen, you missed the hype. The hype train it, it is gone. Like, the hype train, it, you, you missed it like six mm. months ago. Like, it, it, it's gone. So they've just, like, they've been forced to be like, okay, how can we come back? And I think what they, they're starting to realise is they are not cod cod yeah and that's what they used to do before cod is over there and we're here we are pure warfare carnage you know every clock like every um class has its fit whether it be sniping whether it be a medic whether it be an assault class that's what battlefield was good for mixed in even people who just like sitting in a vehicle all day we all know about the tanks and the engineers where they're just laying shots left right and center jump out there jump out there little um jump out the tank and then end up fixing their tank again with a flamethrower then getting back right to it everybody had their part to play we 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 all we all got shot by them like because you're that sniper doing the good work (laughs) <laughs> and then he just blows a crater in the side of your building. And then he's just there looking at you and saying, okay, let me just go and fix, let me just go and fix this up and get back to it. So I can't wait. I can't, I, no, I just said, I can't wait. I can't wait for it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the game that we are all, we've all been waiting for graces us. I mean, as a, I, I do like Battlefield, but I'm also Sorry, going to wait for some gameplay. Because Facts. we Facts. get promised dreams all the time. I mean, yeah. the, the the lead guy is from Respawn, and the trust I have in Respawn is is pretty strong. So I'm like, mm, hold on, I have a lot of trust mm-hmm. in Respawn. Nah, and so mm-hmm. I can hopeful. be excited, but I'm not a hopeful. Like I don't know, or maybe a little bit hopeful. Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I gotta see some proof first, you know. We've all been sold a dream, especially by Battlefield before. Like <laughs> we do get sold dreams, but 
Respawn are the people who do deliver. So um, fingers crossed that it is a, they 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 are able to deliver on that front. It would be nice to get some, you know, a bit of versatility when it comes to gaming. And old school Battlefield was really great. And speaking of which, uh, we're over to you, Obsidian Fury, for your monthly roundup and any news. Okay, so yeah, we've had a pretty good. Um, a lot of us have been like a lot of us have been eating well. We saw like a a return to a lot of narrative games, namely Black Myth Wukong and like yeah yeah um, Space Marine Two uh, Forty K. So you see a lot of return. Yeah, a lot of these gameplays, a lot of these games. The gameplay is very reminiscent of like games I played like a very long time ago. Like when I, especially when I look at Space Marine, like I look at that game and I'm like, oh my gosh! Like from Focus Entertainment, they've done really well. But unfortunately, there has been like like Black Myth was like marred in a lot of controversy uh, leading up to this launch. I say controversy, but more like there was like beef between IGN and also the I think it's Game Studio Inc. And a lot of people uh, were like, it, it reminded me of like the Hogwarts Legacy beef, where it's like there was like, should we purchase this game? Like because the the big the game studio they have a very like, uh, well allegedly they have a very uh, I'm not yeah they have a very misogynistic view and it's like a very laddie culture. So to give you like a brief like um, history, like back in November like twenty three like when IGN published an article that detailed like alleged sexist incidents related to the game, related to the company, they had receipts concerning that kind of like laddie culture. Like I can, I, I'll send some of you, like if you guys are interested, I'll send you some of the, like the pictures because it's like, when I looked at it, it looked very like, you know how other, like the people outside of gaming, how they see us, that's what it looked like to me. It's like, oh, okay, so you're just like, you're the stereotype where it's like, they're just doing like flagrant, like some of the things that the CEO was saying, like when they first did the announce trailer. So it's like very like, like it felt like they had no PR. That's what it felt like. Like if you want to market this game internationally, you have to learn how to like go over the international audience. But this is obviously during a period of time when we see a lot of like, I was seeing a lot of rise of like anti DNI, like go woke, bro, go broke. And a lot of these people don't have the... A lot of people who say these kinds of things, they don't actually have all the information or the, I don't want to say intelligence, but they, they've taken something so minor and they've kind of ran with it because they think that this thing is infecting everyone. And it's like, well, slow down. Like, I wish that was the case, but it is not. So, but essentially when I was like doing my research on this, it kind of like broke down to the aspect of, can you separate the art from the artist? So um, if you guys want me to go deeper into the black uh, into the the black myth Wukong like allegations, that kind of thing, I can. But I think that I want to focus on: can you separate the art from the artist? Because I'll give you my two cents. Me personally is very situational as a gamer as well as an activist. I'm always harping on about you know vote with your wallet, vote with your wallet. And secondly, I'm also does this product that I'm doing does it directly impact the thing that I want to get rid of? So for example, I won't buy a game that had that has massive that had a massive amount of crunch um to in order to f- facilitate it right because i care about the developers within the industry i care about the industry as a whole so even if i enjoy the game i won't buy it because i don't want to try and i don't want to um my i vote with my wallet and therefore if i were to v- buy this game i'm also i'm essentially also endorsing this game i'm endorsing that kind of practice but on the on the flip side, I can like look at a product independently and say, "Oh, this is a good game. This is why." Even if it's made by like questionable people, I can look at a product and say, "Oh, this is a great game. This is this is um this is why the gameplay loop, the mechanics, the narrative storytelling, all that kind of thing." I can judge it ba- purely based on that. And if it's a really good game, I'd also like as a gamer, I'd want to play these games. So that's my question. Oh yeah, so yeah, back to the Black Myth Kong thing. Like a lot of people took that out of like context of what the, the like the actual thing was discussion because a lot of people saying like, oh, uh, sorry. Let, let me just because uh, uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna class myself as melanin gamers, uh, resident Black Myth Wukong expert at this point. Mm-hmm. Anyone else in MG want to come test me? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> just to clarify something because I know I know the situation you're talking about because we've spoken about it before. But like, mm. like it's for for the listeners what was the allegations so what were people what was the internet shall we say saying was going on with black myth wukong and then explain how they may have been uh 
mis misinterpreted information. So it wasn't it wasn't the internet per se. It was mostly IGN. They pl published an article that detailing um, like sexual misconduct within the not only just like Game Studio Inc. They're saying that Game Studio Inc. was also part of the Chinese developing game developers like. Um, structure and they're saying that that structure itself is very misogynistic and to me i wasn't even surprised i'm like yeah a lot of gaming um a lot of the gaming industry is very misogynistic against um, female developers so that's not even like a like i was like yeah agreed so then it kind of went back to the um the other side so like throughout this entire time i don't think um game studio Eng released a comment about it but like a lot of the like I think the South China Post and a lot of the China Project, a lot of these like um, uh, Chinese video game magazines came out and said that oh it was taken out of context, it was sexually explicit other than sexist, and like the the examples that IGN quoted were mistranslated and taken out of context. So I, I don't speak Mandarin, so I can't really like I can yeah. I can't dig through maybe get someone who can speak the language and that kind of thing. So because. Um, yeah, so it was the product of the game. It was to do with the culture of the company. I, if what I'm gathering properly. So yeah, yeah. as an added scoop, this is during the period where Sweet Baby Inc was also still under fire. So apparently, there's like this is even this is so literally people were just rumored like oh Sweet Baby Inc were denied from working with them. It's like that is like literally like a literal rumor, like literally like gossiping. Like there is no, I haven't seen any evidence of that whatsoever. But I could, like, I haven't finished my research, but I haven't seen any evidence for that. So Sweet Baby Inc. got dragged into this for reasons I don't fully understand why. Yeah, so that is basically the summary of everything. Like, I could go into greater detail, but yeah. So it was never to do with the product of the game per se. It was to do with the culture that the, the company was promoting, if that makes sense. Can I just segue into my, my nerd section as well? Because it's oh, going to be okay. talking about Black Myth Wukong anyway. Okay. <laughs> Not from my, more of a like gameplay side. Uh, but to touch on that bit, my understanding of it was for a lot of us content creators and when we got Black Myth Wukong, one of the things in it, you know, we get our contracts and we'll say what we can and can't say before whatever date, stuff like this. But with mm -hmm. Black Myth Wukong, it had a weird one where it was saying you can't talk about any politics you can't mm -hmm. talk about women's rights. You can't talk about um, a certain global situation. Um, you know, there were certain stipulations in there. And I think because <laughs> just the way the words and when I read it, it did sound like you can't speak about women's rights. Um, mm -hmm. But it was kind of, women's rights was kind of like in there with like politics, ergo women's rights, this politics, right wing politics, left wing politics. Uh, like just a bunch of stuff and as a gamer creator I can understand that what they're saying is when people are streaming this game or doing content on it they don't want they know it's going to be a good game and they don't want their platform to be used to boost these other things or to speak about these other issues which quite frankly has nothing to do with their game <laughs> like yeah which is why you put it in there. However, like you said earlier, that Mandarin uh, translation conversion can go a bit awry sometimes. And I think that mm. wording was just a bit funny because when I read it, I was like, mm, okay. But um, that, and because of that and the other things we've discussed, there was kind of this thing before I played the game, I was hearing it's very sexist. Now mm. I played it, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm still playing it. And... I thought, I swear, I was hearing mad stuff like there's no women in the game, right? I played yeah. it. There's many female characters. And to the point, they're not like all the same female archetype. They're not like, maybe I've met one damsel in distress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, they all seem to be fleshed out characters with their own motives. None of them are relegated to being like a sidekick or anything. Some of them are like, you know, main characters. Uh, mm -hmm. And like, none no, of no, that came off a... You know, I didn't get any sexual iconography from it. Like, there's no boobs. Like, like <laughs> you know, like yeah, I, I, I could have played Stellar Blade and seen like a HD boob and ass if I wanted. Um, but like, <laughs> we, uh, that's what I thought I was gonna go into with Wukong, and there's none of that. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah. Playing it, loving the game as a whole. I understand why it's doing well because the actual gameplay loop and the fundamental mechanics of how it plays. Is mm -hmm. great and there's such um I don't know 
there's so much customizability in the way you play that game that Mm -hmm. we can play it and you can play it like a dark souls game or like an elden ring you can play it hard and make these bosses hard for you and just go in with parries and dodges or blocks or you could play it like (laughs) i don't know a, a magic game and like level up things to play in a different build that gives you lots of spells and magic and transformations and stuff that you can use it depends how you want to play and i think that is the key to why it's doing so well and why people are experiencing it in many different ways like it's pulling in a wider audience because it's uh it's kind of like a gateway opener for lots of other people to test out this kind of style of game it's doing well you know yeah. L- love me a wukong story <laughs> that's true that's what i was saying i'm i'm always i'm all for more like exactly. different um yeah mythology uh, mythology um different mythology like stories within like public consciousness i'm always more for that you know, so... that's some, some mythology that like maybe not everyone knows about but mm. also for people that do know about like wukong and like the monkey king and stuff there hasn't been any like shows or anything on it in years really there's been some here and there there was like a netflix monkey show and i think it was like australian but it it weren't the, it weren't the real thing you know but to actually have a game there was like uh, there was one monkey king game that i think was for a film that came out and then there was another game called enslaved that was a yeah light light adaptation of journey to the west as well basically mm-hmm. um but other than that yeah. <laughs> there's like no games <laughs> about this like sick character that's like got so many other characters based off them so it's just great to finally get that and i think that's one of the other key reasons why it's doing so well as well well, technically speaking, you could say that Goku from Dragon Ball Z is inspired from Black no, Man Wukong. Not technically saying, it's a hundred percent saying. <laughs> like, yeah, no, exactly. So yeah. Goku, Luffy yeah, as is. well. It he's is. monkey, mm-hmm. he Luffy, he fights for liberation, like he, yeah. he's he's the monkey he's wants to be pirate yeah. king, so he's gonna be a monkey king, like they're not even subtle about these things, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm glad you said that because you said that he fights for liberation. So there is politics involved. So a lot of gaming as a thing is still an art form, like TV, like music. So, and a lot of these entertainments, they draw upon inspirations from politics. And they also draw upon inspirations from like mythology and all that kind of thing. So a lot of people are saying, I don't want politics in my game. But I'm like, oh, well, hold on. So that's why I was, I was thinking like, well, hold on. A lot of these games that we play, even if you can't understand there's politics involved, there still can be politics involved and you may not be none the wiser. So for a lot of people, it's it's on the nose. They see it immediately. Like they see might see a black character or like a, a lesbian character say, oh my gosh, it's politics. But then they might play another game and they're com- and because they're so complete, they don't have, I don't know, I don't want to say like they don't have the media literacy, but sometimes they might not even know, even know there's politics and they're still playing the game and they're like, oh, this is fun, blah, 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 blah. And then only until someone talks to them afterwards, they're like, oh, that's what it was talking about, blah. And like, oh, so... A lot of people, there is, um, especially when it comes to DAI, because it's such, it's so low hanging fruit, they immediately think that everything that is not the norm of what they expect is DEI, therefore it's politics, therefore I don't want it in my game. So it's like, well, there are quite a lot of games that you probably wouldn't even realize have politics in there until someone points it out to you. And then would you say that, oh, you don't want the politics? Would you then renege on your previous statement? So that's my only issue where it's like, well, politics in games, that's not going anywhere. And you thinking that it's not going, thinking it might go anywhere by being mad about anti and that, it's just silly to me. I hear so, you, bro, but like, to a certain extent, like, yeah, politics in games, but the difference in politics in like games and media is like, ooh, the Achiha clan versus the Uzumaki clan that didn't go down true. so well. You know, it's not like, you know, <laughs> close to home. We're not talking about stuff close to home because, you know, a lot of us less like to escape the reality. That's why we play these games and Agreed. watch these things. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah, there's definitely politics and themes of like real life things that happen within the media we consume but Mm -hmm. it's always going to be a little bit removed (laughs) you know it's always going to be some no name kingdom or some made up name kingdom versus another made up name kingdom they may look similar to cultures that you know in real life but they're not those cultures so it it, it's not that bad like like, you know just i don't know about that i'm like on the fence about that because i'm like oh well because i know for a lot in the 60s in the 70s for us a lot of um, like aliens, they were like representing 
uh, they were meant to represent black people because they knew the artists knew and the creators knew that when they were drawing this, they knew that a black artist wouldn't get greenlit. But if we make him green, if we make him purple, then they'll get greenlit. So a lot of characters, especially in the olden times, like I remember, like, like look at Knuckles for instance. Remember we were talking about Knuckles and we were like, who's going to voice act it? Because everybody knew that when it came to Sonic and Knuckles, Knuckles was really black. Same I mean, with there's, a, there's actually a term for that where the characters are black coded. Exactly. So it's like, I agree with you. I'm not like, going to lie. I'm taking personal offence that you're trying to say a xenomorph has anything to do with black people, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh, like, like, wait, hold on, hold on, you guys. We are way off track here. We yeah, I know. Way, like, we're way, going way, way too off track. Of yeah. 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 I, I, I think it needs to be a different, a different discussion. It, it needs to be a different discussion here. Yeah, it needs to be a... true. Yeah, but it just it, it came up as I was talking about. It. So yeah, yeah that is my September round. A minute, actually. So mm-hmm. what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to in the dark. Um, yeah, so for yeah, 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 yeah. So for my September rounds, we we've we've seen a lot of things go on in the gaming industry. We've seen um a very hyped game that could even last the lifespan of a mosquito or of housefly, and it just it was just taken offline. Um, we saw a game people thought wasn't going to do, and it's obviously doing a whole lot. We saw um, a game that brought the whole nostalgia feeling of Gears of War mm. revamped in a different way in the, in, with Warhammer. It gives the whole Gears of War vibe. Yeah, and we saw a new IP also being introduced, a new developer coming into the system. Okay. With Black Me- and Black Me- Wukong has done... I agree with uh, some of the stuff um, Obsidian Free was saying. It actually makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. I agree with what um, Oji Otaku 2 was saying when it comes to some of these politics and stuff in games and stuff. Yes, but what I would also talk about is the fact that people, um, politics and stuff do not make a bad game good or a good game okay. bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is how it is. If a game is good, irrespective of whatever, and I'll give examples, irrespective of whatever you inject into it, the game will still be good. Because when you talk about game, look at narrative driven, look at story, we look at gameplay, we look at mechanics, we look at character development and stuff like that. Um, terrain, mm-hmm. graphics, all these things. Less bugs, glitches and stuff like that. Politics can't affect that. Um, I... Uh, quote unquote DEI or stuff can't really do much. But if you have um, a game that's already bad and you have all these things in it, like Ojo, uh, like uh, Obsidian Free was saying, people obviously look at DEI in the first place and say, oh, yeah, they are, they are the reason why this game is. But no, some games are bad inherently right from the start. And these things don't do anything. True. To with Black Me Wukong, with, yeah, with Black Me Wukong, the game is good. Uh, for, yeah, let me pick my own personal favorite, mm-hmm. Riot, League of Legends. League of Legends has every single, <laughs> like, it's LGBT, whatever, everything is in there. We have, a le- you have, um, there's a character who is a fusion of two gay dudes and a really? demon. People, yeah, people cool. still play him. People still play, like, they have a whole lot of stuff in there. But the game is good. So people just tune off whatever other aspect mm-hmm. in it. They are just enjoying a good game. Someone might play a heavily drained political game, but if the game has, like, it's good, they wouldn't even see it. They would even, they would just, oh, it's just a game. I'm not even going to pay attention to this other stuff and just enjoy the game. But when you have a bad game, that does not keep the audience invested, does not keep the audience happy, having fun. Then they start to look for mm-hmm. what is causing it. They look for unnecessary stuff. They go beyond the whole mechanics. Okay, the mechanics, they don't even go say the mechanics is bad. They go like, eh, why did they have to make this character this? Why did they have to give this character this mm-hmm. kind of pronouns and stuff like that? Because the game was bad from the start. I don't know if, because nowadays, that, that, that might have been true like for past games, but nowadays people will just hate on the game immediately. Immediately mm. they see like, oh, it's just a black character. It's it's oh, it must be because of DNA. It must be because of that. But and that's I don't I don't want to get it into like the the because that would take me ages to explain mm. why that is. Um, because of default characters historically have always been white males. Um, even when you're reading, like I'm a huge reader, and when I was reading a book, and it, every time I was just like a man walked into a room and da 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 and 
but then it was a black man and then a, a, everyone else was described with their race or this or that but a man was always and then later you'd find out he was a white man but you never they never specified that because that was always the default in in a lot of media and so when you veer away from that it's always oh it must there's a reason for it because mm-hmm. oh it's mm. this it's that it's the other and so I think that's why there's now so much backlash against, oh, we don't want any more black characters. Is it? Why do they want, like, it's just, why can't we also exist in this space? No, I, I understand you. But um, I think one other reason is because, did you hear the, did you see some of the articles people were publishing about uh, Space Marines to 40, Warhammer 40,000 uh, 40, or something? People were saying, um, there was this one article, I forgot the person said, I would look for it. And one person was saying, what would it take from you guys if you had had one person, one gay, gay person look into the screen and say, I'm gay or I'm this sexual oriented? You get my point. That, that is what I mean. I am not talking about the fact that in the beginning of Warhammer, you saw different races. Yeah, you see them. No one, is, no one complained about that. So the term the whole being black, it hasn't really matter. It is when you are looking at the political aspect or whatever you're injecting more than the actual game you're doing. That is why Game Science said, in our review, review the game. We want you to talk about the narrative of the game, the story, the gameplay, the mechanics. Tell us what we're doing wrong in the game. Stay on that topic. Don't bring any other thing else. Which Honestly, I do believe. I think that I is the right agree thing to, to a degree. I funny enough, Imagine. I agree to a degree because, but I also think it's very important mm-hmm. to when if I'm a reviewer, I'm bringing in my own biases. I'm bringing in my own experiences when I'm when I'm talking about this game. So mm-hmm. if I'm going to give my full opinion and my full like bring the full brunt of like because you've given this this game to, for me to review, right? And I might I might not have the same. Mm-hmm. Um, opinions as maybe someone who's a different race than me or someone who's a different gender to me, right? So if you've now, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you've handicapped me, but this contract has handicapped me to bring my full information, to bring my full review. Whereas, and I'm not saying, and like you're saying, I'm not saying that I might talk about if I'm watching 40k, I understand the, the narrative aspect of 40k. So maybe my, um, mm-hmm. my black identity doesn't play a major part when I'm reviewing this game. Maybe. As a gamer, maybe when I'm playing this game, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I finally get a game like Gears for PlayStation because I've always wanted to play Gears, but I never had a PlayStation. So, mm-hmm. but it's like the it's like the weird thing when it came when COVID hit. Us gamers, we didn't care when when COVID hit. We we didn't care that COVID hit. We cared that we didn't want to go outside. But you telling me not to go outside means that oh, now I want to go outside. It was it's like that. So it's like you telling me I can't do something makes me want to do it rather than if you just mm-hmm. gave me you said you know what. Talk about the game and see where it goes from there. Like, I agree. But in the same token, I also agree with you. It's like some people might take that and say and try and inject their own politics. But exactly. I do think there is exactly. a, like, uh, when it comes to the online discourse and to the actual people, I do think there is like a heavy, like, um, disparity between like when it comes to like us injecting politics into the game in comparison to like what the every person experiences. And because of that disparity, you're seeing like a massive backlash against us who is like, oh, well, well, we make up like 10% of the gamers or we make, we don't make up that much, but you're saying like 90% of the problem in the gaming industry is our fault, but that's crazy. So we're getting like, we get 10% of profit, but like 90% of the blame isn't fair to us. That's my issue. Yeah. Yo, exactly why I was saying that DEI does not make a good game bad. It does not make a bad game good. If a game is bad from the start, it is bad. The only problem is if the game doesn't get the audience invested in it, being it fun, being a storytelling and all these things, then people start Mm. to look at other things. And this is the funny thing. What we've got in now, this is the funny thing. If um, an imaginary DI Mm -hmm. organization works with a game, the game doesn't Mm -hmm. sell, it doesn't work out and stuff. This company has had Mm -hmm. wins in the past. They started getting lost. And those wins happened when maybe they were not working mm-hmm. with this particular DEI company. And unfortunately, coincidentally, whatever, when they started working with yes. them, the losses started happening. People wouldn't do in-depth mm-hmm. research like you and I do and take a non-biased standpoint and actually talk about the facts. There was like, oh, since when they started working with this company, like things mm-hmm. started happening, things started going wrong. Yes. It must be them. 
but we don't really know how much power even DEI companies hold. That's when it comes facts. to game publishing and all those things. Yeah, so we actually, I was going to tell Isis that should be our next topic. We should talk about something like that in a different podcast. I'm mm. not going to go deep into that because I have my actual reset down for that right. a separate podcast. So let me just, that's just a, a little okay. brush on sure. that. Sorry, that is we, one. We've, 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 yeah, we've, I'm just we've trying to move you yeah. guys along. I, I completely get it. And trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's, it's, it's lofty opinions yeah. loosely held. So, that's, that's okay. Awesome. All like, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's bring it back to our September roundox. Yeah. And I'm, um, and I'm just going to like, OJ Taku, do you have anything to add before I will go quickly? Because we are now at 36 minutes. Nah, you finish it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just finish uh, it happy finish because it, I'm not going to lie, guys. This uh, is such a heavy podcast episode. Like, Yeah, we, we needed I to know, lighten it up. Yeah, I think, yeah, Andy, I will, you're yeah, going to have yeah. to do a lot of chopping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, huh? yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. Um, Astro Bot came out the, the game the, that's playstation's mascot for those of you who don't understand it's been playstation mascot for a long time he's and finally got in his own around. game uh, which is really cool not so light news playstation 5 pro has been announced but the 700 pounds price tag is not nope missed that's me with that. Me your bollicle. Yep. no okay. missed me with it. <laughs> so T- tell him tell him the rest anzi tell him what else <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, the idea. PlayStation. Um, it's PlayStation's 30th anniversary since they released the first PlayStation, and so they've released this really cool nice. um, um, anniversary edition. So your PlayStation Five can actually look like your PlayStation One, yeah. which looks amazing. It looks they so in. cool. They I went in on the PlayStation. Yeah, it looks so good. Um, you so, guys, yeah. good for PlayStation that's, that's... fans right now. No, 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 that's that's you know what that is. That's player shit. That's what that is. That's they got you guys because in one breath you're like seven hundred pounds for this PlayStation Pro. I'll be damned. And in the next breath you're like, oh, PlayStation no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on, so they on, got on. you. They got you. <laughs> we're looking. We said we were looking. No one yeah. said anything about purchasing. Yeah, yeah. And and also if I purchase it, I bet it's still not as much as the PlayStation Pro. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> See, they still hold, got you. hold on, hold on. And Anzi, when I said tell them what else, yeah, for the PlayStation Pro with that 700 a price tag, yeah, let's not forget, let's not forget, it doesn't come with a disk drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, anyone that is on PlayStation, they know what the PlayStation Market Store is like, yeah. Yeah, it is diabolical. Bollocal. Like the price tag on you will go on the PlayStation store and they will tell you this game is 60 pounds yeah. And then you will take yourself to whatever game exchange shop you got, and they're like <laughs> hundreds of copies of them that no one wants because everyone's finished that game last year and it's like a tenner. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you buy a PS5 Pro and get it without a disk drive, yeah. You are locking yourself into the PlayStation economy, which is basically a monopoly at this point now that Xbox kind of pulled out of the console game. And in the long run, they're just going to have your... You might as well just give them your credit card details, tell them, go for it, bruv, whenever you want, just take. I mean, I was trying to end on a positive note, that's why. I hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just chime in. Yes, they will get my, my credit card details for that place, that, that, that anniversary one. Oh, Do you yeah. know the resale, my brother? Oh, uh, yeah. That's what, I'm, but see, that's what I said. That's I can thing probably thing buy that anniversary yeah. one from PlayStation if I manage uh, to get a copy. Uh, one get a of console. us, yeah, yeah. One of us is a gamer, the other is a businessman. Is yeah, that what PlayStation yeah. has come to? But when, when I don't Listen. get that and I have to go to the scalpers and now they're charging me like 1500 for it. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Listen, brother. Listen, when I'm sitting there. And then you lot are like, oh, my days, they got, yes, they got me. But years later, I get someone else, but I... Nah, I'll stay with my disk drive. What, what else, Anzi, would you say? I mean, that was all the good news. I was actually, you know, <laughs> there, wasn't, there wasn't anything else really to get. And Astrobot. Yeah, I said Astrobot already. Oh, yeah. Have you seen, I saw all the memes about all the, um, like, all the, all the PlayStation exclusive. They all have their own, like, bots, and you can, like, interact with them. I thought that was yeah. really cute. That was really, really fun. I've heard nothing but great things about that game, to be honest. Um, it's a cute game. And yeah. It's, like, refreshing. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I think, you know, I that was kind of it for my September roundup. 
which wasn't too much, but because it was so heavy, it needed to be you know, a little of light. Um, I think that's everything in terms of the roundup. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone so much for listening. I've been here with In The Dark. Stay safe, guys. Obsidian Fury. See you later, gang. OG Otaku. Keep it OG, peeps. And Zen. Make it easy. And it's been your hostess with the Moses, Creatively Anzi. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been the Meddling Gamers Podcast. I'll see you guys all later. Bye.